Mike Tyson, traditionally, no robe, no socks. He says it makes him feel like a warrior. Makes him feel like a gladiator. It was a battle for supremacy over New York City. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Today, I will tell you about how Mike Tyson faced off against a true gangster in the ring. This story dates back to the year 1986 at the legendary Madison Square Garden Arena. A young Iron Mike squared off against the boxer Mitch Green, who was known for being a leader of one of the New York gangs. However, the climax of this tale extended far beyond the boxing ring, leading to a brutal street fight in Harlem. The aftermath, Tyson with a broken arm, and Green with a swollen shed-eye, bruises on his face, and an unpleasant cut on his nose. So, be sure to watch this video until the end and don't forget to hit the like button. This story takes us back to the mid-1980s, a time when the 19-year-old Mike Tyson was obliterating anyone who crossed his path. By March 1986, Tyson had stormed through like a hurricane, having fought 19 matches, all won by knockout, with sometimes less than a two-week gap between fights. Nearly two months after his latest knockout victory against Steve Zuski, Tyson, for the first time in his professional career, went the full 10 rounds, triumphing with a unanimous decision over James Quick Tillis in his 20th bout. I have to be able to handle a Quick Tillis to get to the top even. He is right now. Before he got punched. Again, he lunges in. He lunges in with the left hook. Tyson very cleverly. And Henry Tillis. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got, you know, I feel relieved and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. While Tyson emerged victorious against Tillis, it marked the first time he didn't knock out his opponent. It served as a glimmer of hope for the rest of the heavyweight division. However, the streak of consecutive knockouts was interrupted, but the brightest moments were yet to come. Despite the damage Mike inflicted on his opponents, boxers still didn't hesitate to step into the ring with him, seeking the thrill of facing him in combat. Heavyweights wanted to fight the Kid Dynamite because of the paycheck and Mitch Green was no different. Carl Will, you want Carl Fred Taylor Will, you wanna fight the Mike? Fight me, baby. Holy Fib, slots his nose, baby. You wanna fight me? Fight me. George Foreman, want me to commit some homicide? Fight me, baby. Punch drunk old fool. I'm gonna kill me some The Detroit native was known for his involvement in gang fights and crimes, but it simultaneously outweighed his boxing achievements. A prize fighter and gang leader, Green had actually been an in-ring opponent for Tyson during his rise to the top of the sport. Green quickly made a name for himself in the heavyweight division, winning his first 16 fights in a row, including a victory over the tough Floyd Jumbo Cummings in 1983. Despite his early success, Green suffered his first defeat in 1985 when he lost a 12-round decision to Trevor Burbick in a bid for the United States Boxing Association title. Green rebounded from the loss with wins over Purcell Davis and Young Lewis before facing off against Mike Tyson. Even in their childhood, Mike and Mitch were members of rival gangs in Brooklyn, and their competition was constantly growing, with the conflict gaining momentum. Watch the speed! Watch the agility! Watch the power! Green saw an opportunity presented by fate to settle the score with Tyson for past grievances and publicly humiliate him in the ring. I want to be so much. Chef, sister, Tyson. He's a homo. Oh, baby. So I said, we're on simulation. Dark, he's ugly. Tyson's ugly. He's a homo. We want to live some certain natural law. But Chef, sister, Tyson is a homo. Baby. What you going to do when I take your woman now? I'm making a date with Robin Gibbons, baby. Now what you going to do? Get mad at me, Tyson. You're homo. Two the foodie. My pet. Yes, dear. Don't no man kiss no man in the mouth. I got no tape. He kissed men in the mouth. He's a homo. He let me call a homo. He ain't gonna deny it because he's scared of me. Green used TV and video messages to trash talk Tyson to get into the fight, and he succeeded. Tyson, and you know it. 
you hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. You want for my mama, I'd have shot you, punk. Mitch Green, a tough kid from the streets of the Bronx and Harlem. Tyson from the streets of Brooklyn. We're here in the garden. The old days, that's how they used to settle these neighborhood wars. Just four days after the fight with Tillis, Tyson was announced to face Mitch Blood Green, who was one spot ahead of Tyson in the WBC heavyweight rankings on May 20th at Madison Square Garden. Despite Green being higher than Tyson in the rankings, there was a huge disparity in the fighter's purse. Tyson was guaranteed $250,000 while Green was due to make only $30,000. Because of this, Green threatened to pull out of the fight only one day before it was to take place unless his purse was increased. However, after HBO executive Ross Greenberg informed Green that a shot at the WBC heavyweight title was on the line, Green chose to continue on with the fight. And Mike Tyson traditionally, no robe, no socks, he says it makes him feel like a warrior, makes him feel like a gladiator. The fight took place in May 1986 inside the iconic Madison Square Garden. Mike Tyson stepped back into the ring just 17 days after his bout with Tillis. However, the fight against Green turned out to be quite distinct from the Tillis match. While Tillis aimed to win, Green was simply trying to survive in the ring. Going straight for a, mid, uh, a boxer should do to him. That he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy. Well, I had the same experience when I fought my first 10 round fight. What is your adrenaline? It's that anticipation has to matter with his career period. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some head. It looks like Green is off balance when he throws his punches. Well, the Green makes it. Shots to the body. He can't the fight unfolded as many had predicted. Tyson remained low and exploded upward with his venomous attacks, overpowering the taller Green, who lacked strong defensive discipline. Green attempted to inflict damage on Tyson and frequently clinched, trying to diminish the impact of Tyson's power punches. Good left hook, solid left hook. Good job. The left hook of, of uh, Mike Tyson is very, very effective. That was another yeah, In fact, that's what he says when we ask him. think. And he does not do it against Quick Tillis. Yo, 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 yo. Tyson asserted his dominance and relished every minute of the fight, occasionally taunting his sworn adversary. One such memorable moment was captured for eternity. Although Tyson controlled the situation for the majority of the fight, he couldn't manage to knock Green down. Notably, Green managed to knock out one of Tyson's gold teeth during the fight. Drops a 
short. So he seems to be something that runs through all of Mike Tyson's opponents that they all are in there to survive. You might stop him, Dave, whether Tyson will be satisfied to go out and get the type of money that he wants, but the fact is, Another day in the class to end things. Green's offensive contributions were minimal, allowing Tyson to secure a unanimous decision victory from the judges. This is your your first fight here in the big room at the Garden. Were you satisfied with it? Almost oh, definitely. I didn't. Um, I don't want to sound brutish or anything. I didn't want to knock him out or anything. I wanted to put a lot of pressure on him and make him decide himself whether he has to give up or not. He won't. He wouldn't get knocked out because if you get hit on the chin. He don't, can't see the punch, and he will say, oh, I didn't see the punch, I got knocked out. So I left it up to himself, and as I, as I must say, I must take my hat off. He's a very tough individual. Green never fully agreed with this outcome and remained unwavering in his belief that he was a better fighter than Tyson, but he was distracted by an unequal payment structure. These comments eventually escalated into personal insults in the following years as Tyson ascended to global superstardom. But their rematch on the streets of Harlem at 4 a.m. was a short, savage affair. While the two fighters never crossed paths again in the boxing ring, Tyson and Green found themselves engaged in a high-profile street brawl two years later. By that time, Tyson had become the undisputed heavyweight champion. Tyson was in Harlem to visit a clothing shop called Dapper Dan's to pick up an $850 white leather jacket with Don't Believe the Hype, the title of a public enemy track, emblazoned across the back. At this point Green, who'd been told of Tyson's presence, stormed into the shop bare-chested and spitting insults at his sworn enemy. Green was already furious at Tyson, having claimed that promoter Don King had underpaid him and desiring a lucrative second fight that he was unlikely to get, inside the ropes, anyway. But Green had a secondary motivation for confronting Tyson in August 88. He was part of a notorious New York gang and believed Tyson stepping into his turf in the early hours of the morning was a liberty he could not accept without losing face. Tyson had been out nightclubbing and drinking beforehand. Nonetheless, he claims in his autobiography, Undisputed Truth, that he was trying to play the role of a corporate, endorsement-friendly champion at the time. So Tyson replied, Now, Mitch, you must consider what you are doing. I do not think that this course of action in the long run is advantageous for your health. You will remember that I already vanquished you when we met in the ring. You need to proceed to the nearest exit immediately. Mitch kept ranting and raving, and Mike stood up because he had made contact. And Mike said, look, do not play me close. In other words, back off. Don't get that close to me. I was American, and I haven't, I haven't had a fight, like a street fight in seven years. And I, I, was, I was scared, and I was getting paranoid because he was so close. He kept getting close to me. I mean, so I defended myself. However likely you think it is that a drunk, 22-year-old Tyson delivered this speech on the main streets at 4 a.m. What followed was undeniably a violent beating. He hit me, and I didn't see his punch coming, and he did not knock me down or nothing. I saw him do like this and run. He ran. Tyson delivered a straight right punch to Green's face, completely closing Green's left eye and causing a cut on his nose that required five stitches. Who threw the first punch here? He did. He sucker punched me. Tyson claims it started when Green ripped his shirt pocket, forcing him to retaliate. It happened so fast. I mean, only thing I was very upset at the time they ripped my shirt in my pocket. I was just, I was totally upset. And the, the fact that he came back again after he tried and he was unsuccessful. And I mean, I had no other choice but to defend myself. I wasn't, going to, I wasn't going to take any chance on neglecting myself and getting hurt. So then Mitch grabbed his shirt and apparently went for his pocket because his wallet fell out. Green's version is that Tyson turned his rings around so as not to damage them, then sucker punched him. Mitch Green threw the first blow. Now, Mike Tyson did what any man, President of the United States, he punched him in the chest right around, you know, this area right here. Okay. And... I mean, Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. He's not going to have that from anyone. But Tyson undoubtedly landed the first punch, and several more followed. Mike 
beating on Mitch when he was on the floor. You know, he's beating on him, grabbing because Mitch is grabbing on him. I have a picture of after Mike had hit him with a right because you couldn't see it when he hit him. Sort of like the Spinks punch. You never really got that good angle, but Spink Mike. <laughs> Mitch was on his back, legs up in the air, like this. Tyson was terrified in the aftermath that he had actually killed Green. Tyson felt relieved when he got to know that Green was alive after the altercation. Tyson did not escape the chaos without injury. A hairline fracture of his right hand meant his upcoming title defense against Britain's Frank Bruno was postponed and eventually took place the following year. Green would later seek revenge in court by suing Tyson for $25 million in 1997, nine years after the duel near Dapper Dan's. Ultimately, however, Blood was awarded only $45,000 in court, not even enough to pay his legal bills. However, Green reportedly left the courthouse shouting, I'm the winner, I whipped him. After 35 years, Tyson has apologized for the incident in his Hot Machine podcast. Having chat with rapper Tony Yeo when he was pressed that during his heydays he knocked out many including Green. To which Tyson said, I'm sorry for what I did. Green has never beaten Tyson in the ring or on the streets. But definitely left his mark on Iron Mike's career. The incident between Tyson and Green remains one of the most infamous street fights in boxing history.